Okay, so in this unit uh, 6 of 504, I would like to discuss uh, and introduce um, deregulation and smart regulation. And the issue here is about regulatory systems. Should government regulate more or should government regulate less? If you don't like government, you don't like regulation. If you like government, you might like regulation unless you actually think that government should regulate smartly. But regulating smartly is very difficult. And the unit starts with this idea that, you know, regulating can be a good idea, but it not, it not always is a good idea. And so the whole question here, when is it justified that government should regulate? So when we look at the literature on this, what we learn is that traditionally regulation is about protection of the public good, of the general interest. You know, it's regulating water quality so that when you drink water, you're not going to get sick. It's also about protecting certain industries against very unfair pricing, for instance, coming from outside the country or things like this. Yet most people today and ha for the last 25 years in the country, there has been, and I think 25 is probably not enough, I should say since the 1970s, there have been people who have criticized the fact that the Canadian government has too many regulations. And that when we look at Canadian governance, every single tier levels of government has too many regulations, from local bylaws to provincial regulatory system and federal what is becoming even more challenging is the fact that the Canadian government is also bound by its own partnerships outside of the country with basically obligation to submit to certain international standards, regulatory standards. So the arguments are that regulation can protect the general interest, public goods, can organize and protect economic processes and markets, but also cultural activities. Social and environmental issues may request specific regulations. But also that deregulation frees energy um, and allows for more innovation. The whole issue, obviously, is to justify the regulatory system, is to justify the new regulation or the disappearance of a given regulation. Um, and regulatory systems engage Canada with the rest of the world. And so in this case, very often, it's about cooperation and co at the same time. It's cooperation with other states on agreeing on similar standards so that we can compete better with others. In other words, working inside and outside of the country becomes really important here as well. In the, the unit, you have readings about these various discussions. The whole that, for instance, and Rainer, uh, uh, Rain, Rainer uh, reading is quite interesting because it looks at, you know, regulatory systems, whether more is better than less or whether less is effective, more efficient than more. And also the whole idea of compliance and enforcement of compliance, which is often understudied and under acknowledged. Regulating something that is not enforceable is a waste of time and it doesn't work. Often it doesn't work because regulatory systems are not enforced. Um, other articles that are quite interesting to read, for instance, is the John and Graft article that basically makes the case for deregulating 
and thus, even if you are in favor of regulation, will open your mind as to why deregulating and why government should actually commit to deregulate and really enforce deregulations. And then, one of my favorite case studies in the class is the lack magnetic issue when a train carrying oil basically started burning inside a small city in Quebec, Lac Magnetic is in, is in Quebec. And it was carrying crude oil and it just basically snowballed into a gigantic fire that burned everything uh, in the downtown. And what I'm asking you to do is to read the Transportation Safety Board report, the Canadian Transportation Safety Board report on this very specific issue, because this is where we touch the tip end of the smart regulation approach. In other words, the difficulty as to how you basically establish the right criteria to decide that certain things need regulation where as others don't. What justifies that very specific, in a way, line between too much or not enough. And you'll see that the report is really pondering what we could call an algorithm. In other words, a, a small list of concepts that guide its thinking about what is the smart and appropriate regulatory system that is necessary in this case. So I want to encourage you to do the readings. I want to encourage you, obviously, to read the executive sum summary of uh, the Transportation Safety Board. And I want to encourage you to reflect on these issues and discuss them um, in the discussion forums. And then we will, obviously, uh, exchange a, a few more ideas um, in the unit discussion. Um, I think this is a really crucial issue because regulatory systems today, as I try to explain here, have been, you know, under lots of pressure, not just national pressure, not just Canadian, you know, born pressure, but international pressure. And when we basically develop, um, you know, free trade agreements, we also standardize certain industries or we deregulate certain industries, and they have tremendous consequences afterwards. So look at this. Um, I think you will find it quite fascinating. And I'll see you, obviously, on the course whiteboard. Thank you.